All right, these are going to be a series of videos on periodic trends and other things related to periodic trends um, in this unit on the periodic table. Uh, this video is about atomic radius, which I believe is the most important trend because we can describe all of the other trends that we're going to learn in terms of atomic radius. So you want to make sure that you understand the atomic radius trend really well because it will help you to determine the other trends. Um, so here we have our summary chart of the atomic trend or the uh, periodic trends, and it tells us that as we go up and to the right, atomic atomic radius will decrease. So the um, size of the atoms will get smaller. So let's take a closer look at the trend here. Um, and here we have a really cool visual, which um, of course you don't have on your periodic table, but it's a nice way to see things. But uh, we're going to learn the trend so that we can understand the so how the size changes as we move up and down and across the table. So as we go across a period here, um, as we go, let's say if we're in the fourth period, we start with potassium, and as we move across, we notice that the size of the atoms is getting smaller. Um, and that's a little bit counterintuitive because we know that we're going up in the number of protons as we go across. However, the reason that they get smaller is due to the increase in the nuclear charge. So it means though that since we are increasing our number of protons as we go across, the protons in the nucleus act as a stronger magnet. So as we're increasing the number of positive charges in the nucleus, it can pull those electrons in closer and closer and closer, making the atom get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so as we move across, they get smaller because of the nuclear charge. As we go down a family, this should make more sense because we'll notice if, if we look at the alkali metals, as we go down, they get bigger. And we know that they're having more protons and electrons. So you might say, well, if this way they get smaller and we're adding protons and electrons, why are they getting bigger this way? And it helps to take a look at the energy levels of our atoms. So for example, here, let's say we have our nucleus, we would just have one energy level for hydrogen. When we go to lithium, we would have our nucleus, and then now we've had two energy levels. As we go down to sodium, we have our nucleus, one, two, now we have three energy levels because it's in the third period, and that's gonna get bigger and bigger, and I'm gonna even just run out of room here. But if I do four energy levels for potassium, you can see that each time we go down, we're adding a new energy level, and that's going to make the size of the atom get bigger each time. So within each of the families, as we go down, they get bigger because electrons are being added to higher energy levels. Okay, So that one should actually make more sense. The trend as we go down, adding energy levels, makes the atom get bigger. The one that's trickier is as we go across, um, the electrons are getting added to the same energy level. So if I were to draw the picture here, we'll just draw a few. Let's say if we're in the third energy level, one, two, three. Uh, magnesium would also have one, two, three, and of course this isn't to scale, this honestly looks a little bit bigger, but um, since they're all getting added and then aluminum, one, two, three as well, they're all in the same energy level. They all have three rings if we're using that image of the atom. So the electrons are getting added to the same energy level. However, now aluminum over, over here has more protons to pull those electrons in closer. So aluminum is going to be slightly smaller. And you can see as they go across, it gets smaller, but not as quickly as they get bigger as we go down. Okay, so that's the general idea with atomic radius. Let's look at some examples of uh, how we can determine which one's the biggest or smallest given a set of atoms. Um, but before we jump to that, I do wanna point out since the trend says we, they get smaller as we go across and then they get bigger as we go down, that tells us that the bottom left corner of the table is going to be really big and the top right corner is going to be really small. And we can look back here at the summary chart, right? The size gets smaller as we go up and to the right. So that means this side is going to be our smallest element. And if we look at our table, that points us to helium. So helium is going to be the smallest atom, and down here in the opposite corner, francium is going to be the biggest. And that's gonna be a really easy way that we can quickly determine the size relative to different elements. So let's start with this question from the notes. Circle the element with the largest atomic radius. And what we can do is just compare um, helium and francium. If we want the largest, 
right? Which one, which end was the big end? Helium or francium? Francium is going to be the big end. So we want close. We want closest to francium. So let's compare. We're looking at magnesium, calcium, and strontium. So magnesium, and they should all kind of be close together. We'll, we'll always ask you ones that are kind of easy to find clumped together. Magnesium, calcium, and strontium are in a in the same family here, and we want the largest one. So we want the one that's closest to francium as we're comparing these three here, magnesium, calcium, and strontium. Well, francium's right here. So clearly the one that's closest to francium is strontium. It makes sense because we know that as we go down a family, we're adding energy levels. And so strontium would be the biggest because it has the most energy levels. Um, so for this one, the answer is strontium. It is the biggest in that bottom left corner of the table. All right, one more quick example. This time we'll pick the smallest. So we're looking at arsenic, selenium, and tellurium. And if we want the smallest this time, we're gonna be looking at the opposite corner of the table. If we want small radius, we're gonna look in this corner because it goes up and to the right. So we wanna look at whatever's closest to helium this time. All right, so helium's here. Let's find arsenic, selenium, and tellurium. Here's arsenic, here's selenium, here's tellurium. So we're looking at these three, right? And we want the one that's closest to helium because helium's the smallest on the table. So of these three, selenium is the closest to that top right corner of the table. So our answer for this one is SE. That's pretty much it. That is the trend for atomic radius. Can be a little tricky, uh, but as long as you can understand this one, it will really, really help you for the other trends in the future.